Hi, I'm Chandralingam and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at how to analyze CSV data with Notebook LM. Notebook LM is your personal AI-based assistant that uh, Google has developed. Now, nice thing about this uh, Notebook LM is that you can provide your own documents and uh, LM will uh, try to understand the documents and then you can ask questions for which it will answer the questions based on the content you provided. For example, let's say you're learning some new topic and uh, you may have uh, textbook chapters, you may have YouTube videos, you may have uh, website references. You can take all that and feed it into a notebook LM. It's multimodal, that means it can accept uh, data in a variety of uh, media formats. The LM can fuse all this data and organize the content for you. you. can use this knowledge to teach you and explain about the concepts using simple terms and uh, real world examples. So it's a very useful tool but uh, one issue right now is that uh, it accepts only PDFs and uh, audio video files, Google Docs and so forth. All uh, natural language based documents and uh, media files. However, it does not accept uh, CSV files at this time. It's very common for us to come across CSV data sets. For instance, you may have a sales report or customer data in CSV tables that uh, you can use the LM to analyze and answer questions using natural language. How do we convert that CSV into a format that uh, is compatible with uh, Notebook LM? So that is what I'm going to show you. It's not that hard, it's super easy. Once we go through all this uh, transformation, you'll notice that you can easily take any CSV file and uh, answer questions using natural language. So to make the discussion concrete, let's use a real world data set. We are going to use the World University Rankings data set for 2025. It's available in Kaggle. And uh, this is a CSV formatted file, so you can download it through the link. I've imported the CSV file in uh, Google Sheets. So this is how it looks like. So you have uh, universities. There are 1,500 universities that were ranked. Uh, you can see the 2025 rank as well as the previous year rank, 2024 rank. Various factors that uh, influence the rank is also provided here. We're going to take this CSV file. Now one thing you'll notice is that when you're uh, doing uh, traditional programming with languages like Python, working with CSV data is super easy, but working with uh, text-based documents can be very hard. Whereas with natural language uh, models, turns out working with uh, natural language is much more easier than these formatted uh, files. If you just look at the row 10, you don't know what the context is. The context is in the column header. To explain this data to a language model, we're going to take every row and convert it into a paragraph that explains the each of these columns. So I have an output here. So for instance, uh, for the first rank, the University MIT, we are literally explaining it in plain English, what each one of these values mean. And uh, once you convert it in this format, it becomes super easy for a language model to take this information and answer questions based on this. Now, if you notice, some of these columns are not explained clearly. They are using abbreviation like M, C, O, and so forth. We can either do the, all those conversion during transformation, or we can also tell the language model at the time of interaction, saying that AAM stands for medium-sized university, or CO stands for uh, comprehensive focused university, and so forth. So we have the flexibility there. So we don't have to worry too much about doing all the conversion initially. So even this conversion, what I did was I used ChatGPT to do the conversion. So let me show you the code. And in fact, it can also do the conversion and give you a file that you can download directly. But uh, sometimes I think I'm hitting into quota limit. So it'll ask me to try again later or it'll show you the code uh, for conversion. So if you're comfortable with Python, you can just take this code and uh, run it. That's what I did. I took this code and uh, ran it to do the conversion. So now that uh, we have the converted data, now, it's always a good idea to have some questions to ask to verify if it's doing a proper analysis and uh, to assess how well it's doing the uh, data analysis. I, once again, dependent on ChatGPT to come up with some questions that we could ask. So, in, in fact, it uh, created five or four or five different categories of questions that we could ask. 
how the rankings uh, changed over the past few years and uh, universities that show greatest, greatest upward or downward movement, any regional trends. And then more importantly, is there any correlation between the university ranking and uh, student satisfaction or employability? So these are all very important questions to ask. And then we also want to see if there is any bias in the data set. So what we are really doing here is a low code or no code analysis of data. We just have the data, we provide it to the language model, and uh, we're going to ask all these uh, bunch of questions. Any impact due to internationalization and uh, career outcomes and ranking. We can also ask if there are any anomalies in the data set that uh, possibly explain some kind of manipulation in data. So these are all some uh, good ideas and questions to ask the language model once it uh, understands our data. So let's see how we can take this CSV transformed uh, paragraphs and then uh, work with uh, Notebook LM. So I'm going to create a new analysis in uh, Notebook LM. You can sign up for free, notebooklm.google.com. Create new. And the uh, very first thing you need to do is upload your data sources. So you're really doing uh, some kind of a custom LM without doing any coding. That LM has a good understanding of your data plus the foundational knowledge it's, uh, it's built on. So we're going to pick that uh, CSV transform text file. So let me select that file. And uh, so this is the descriptions file. And uh, that is the only input I'm giving. While it's uh, doing this analysis, uh, let's also give it a proper name for this notebook. 2025 university rankings. Now that uh, it has ingested the data and it's ready for analysis, let me create some space. We can ask some questions here and uh, we can also generate a mind map. So let's see what it does. Give it a minute to create the mind map. Okay, our mind map is ready, so let's open it. University rankings, top universities, and uh, various categories. So let's look at top universities. Global top 10. MIT, Imperial College, University of London, Oxford, Harvard, Stanford, all those things. So pretty closely lining up, which is excellent. So remember, we did not write any code. It's automatically doing all this analysis for us. And let's see what it can tell us about it. And uh, other noteworthy universities. Now let's look at geographic distribution. Correctly identified all the continents from where universities are ranked. Within Americas, we have US, Canada, Brazil, and Argentina. So that means uh, we have ranked universities only in these uh, four countries. And same thing with Europe, we have uh, some of the countries listed. And Asia. And uh, I'm curious why none of the IITs in India are showing up here. So let's ask that question and uh, so forth. So within Africa, we see only South Africa listed here. So that has the only ranked university. And uh, Oceania, Australia, New Zealand. So remember, we did not write any code. Uh, it's automatically generating all this for us. So let's close this and ask. So let's ask this question. Why does India not have many top universities? in this list. So let's see if it can find out what the reason is. So now what it found is interesting. So it correctly identified the IIT Bombay as a top ranked Indian university at rank 118. So let's quickly cross check. Okay, IIT Bombay 2025 ranking is actually 118. So it's quite a big jump here from previous year and it's explaining why it was ranked so low international faculty and international student scores 
Wow, so that seems to like a major contributor. So it sounds like uh, Indian universities don't have too many international faculties or international students attending the courses. This suggests a lower level of international te- internationalization in terms of faculty and student body. Okay. And uh, when you compare with uh, top universities like MIT has scores for 99 which has scores of 99.3 for international faculty and uh, So yeah much more diverse faculty and uh, student population in uh, top ranked universities whereas in indian universities tend to have more indian students and uh, not many international students that is a very interesting observation there are other factors as well and uh, okay, i'm not going to read through all this but let's ask about chinese universities What about uh, Chinese universities? Now, Chinese universities like Peking in the 14, 20 globally, these are all uh, pretty fantastic ranks and uh, strong academic and employer reputation and uh, excellent research output. And it's also suffering from low internationalization scores. Similar to Indian universities, uh, a recurring theme with chinese industries is uh, significantly lower diversity now i asked this question are there any anomalies or uh, in the data set it could suggest manipulation or it could uh, suggest issues with the transformation and it highlighted several issues for instance california university is ranked globally as uh, 202 and uh, previously at number 230 but then the list number is 501 so let's see what's going on here it might be due to how we are converting that csv into uh, paragraphs so if you look for the university it is indeed the uh, rank is uh, global rank in 2025 was 202 but then if the row number is uh, 500 plus so i think it's getting confused because the row number is marked as 501 whereas the actual university rank is uh, 202 so it's flagging that here yeah, why is this ordering not matching up this is our uh, data transformation problem it's not the source data problem itself we may have to sort the data by global rank before converting into paragraphs and then there are some universities where there is a rank specified but then overall score is missing So there are some missing data. And then there is uh, it flagged a particular university for uh, disproportionate uh, performance. So for instance this particular university it jumped globally from uh, 310 position 310 to 183. Let's highlight it. This university was ranked at uh, 183 in 2025 in 2024 it was actually 310 so that was a massive jump so it's questioning whether it's correct or not and uh, some of the factors are extremely low for a top 200 university it's either a highly specialized institution or unusual data profile so that's very cool so it's identifying some data sets for further investigation and then there are some top rank universities that were flagged for low faculty student ratios so that is also worthy of uh, investigation and then high ranked asian universities are showing very low numbers for international faculty and students which we looked at earlier it's suggesting that these universities are strong uh, domestic focused universities in spite of their high global rankings they don't have many international faculty and students so as you can see very quickly we were able to take a csv data and uh, convert it into paragraphs and feed it to notebook lm and do some analysis this is very exciting because uh, we literally did all this analysis without much coding low code or literally no code so so this is how you could use notebook lm to analyze your source data if it is original in csv just transform into natural language 
and then send it through notebook lm for analysis hope you like this video and uh, please share your comments thank you